Hey, Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. In this weekly video, uh, we're going to be talking about building a small stainless steel box. It's eighth of an inch thick. That's 3.2 millimeters thick. Uh, pretty small, four and a half inches cubed. It's going to be a small argon chamber for welding little small parts that need argon shielding all the way around. And so I've got some ideas rolling around my head and this is just going to be part one, building the box. In part two, I'm going to show some welding of some little small parts. And then also probably going to be asking you, the audience, for some suggestions. And we'll get some good ideas and we'll perfect this thing. And it's going to be very affordable. It's going to be very useful for anybody to have in their shop when somebody brings you a little, a little part that's an inch or two long. It's weird. It's hard to hold. It's hard to fit up. It's hard to get shielding to. This is going to be useful for that. Today, we're just going to do the welding of the box. My friend Roy Crumrine is doing the welding today. He's awesome. We can always learn something by watching Roy weld. And I'm going to be clipping in some arc shots. That usually makes for a better video than I could do on my own. So let's get to it. All right, this is the box. And it's a pretty simple little thing. But there's some secret sauce that's got to be added before it's going to really work. Today, we're just welding up this box. So let's get to that. As always, prep work is key, so Roy is knocking down the edges that were water jet cut with a little flap disc along with the acetone wipe. If you'll notice that little bronze looking part on the bench there, that's uh, called a censured bronze muffler designed for quieting down air tools and things like that. It works really good for diffuser material uh, as an argon port for something like this. So Roy's just tapping the hole. They come in different thread sizes. You just have to get the right tap for the size that you get. Now for doing outside corner joints like this, having some blocks of aluminum laying around is super, super handy. Both, both Roy and I both save all the blocks of aluminum we can get our hands on, as well as even steel and stainless steel because they come in super handy for chill bars, as well as backing for doing outside corner joints and lots of other joints too. You can see how this goes, just really easy for Roy to get a 90 degree angle. And with one hand kind of pinch the parts together and the other hand get a really quick fusion tack and then, then you're sure you get a nice true 90 degrees and you can just almost rely on it. And then after Roy gets all four sides of this thing tacked up, just an inside corner to inside corner with a little fusion tack, he's going to double check with a little square before he locks them in place by putting the bottom on this thing. A tack every, every a few inches really will help, even though it may not be necessary. It's still, with, with a fusion tack like that, it's really easy to weld over top of with filler metal. And so now Roy is clamping inside and outside a chill bar, about a half inch piece of aluminum. And one of them goes all the way into the inside corner, the other one just a little bit off the weld. And that's gonna really draw the heat out. And that's, that is a tip for not only preventing distortion and providing some backup to the inside to prevent sugaring, but also uh, just prevents discoloration. Now for a tool like this, a little box, a little discoloration on the outside would not affect uh, the serviceability at all. The part would last forever either way, but it does in some industries. And, and Roy works in industries where, where the stainless steel needs to be as shiny as possible with as, as, as little discoloration as possible. And he's good at it. You'll notice he's dipping the rod roughly once per second, give or take. And one of the keys to getting uniformity is adding the rod at, at the same interval each time and adding the same amount of rod each time and traveling the same amount in between dips each time. And Roy's pretty much got it down. Now there's a lot of joints here, so I'm going to talk about something a little different each time. This particular joint, he's running without any chill. And he just picks up the travel speed just a little bit. And with this number 12 cup here, is able to get uh, almost a... Uh, color-free joint even without any chill blocks. But the chill blocks still help and aid in, in distortion. It's just that this, this piece is, is so thick and so small that uh, a little distortion is probably not even going to happen here. It's pretty rigid. If we were making this thing out of something like one millimeter, you know, 040 thousandths, then it'd be a whole different story. We want to clamp down the chill blocks on every on every joint. As I said, we can always learn something from watching Roy. One thing I learned from him is don't start on the tacks. Start a little bit in from the tacks and then back up to the tack. That way if there's stress on the joint, 
it won't pop open when you when you light up and melt a tack and you wind up with a gap now for stainless steel oftentimes it's better to use a little bit smaller diameter filler wire than you would normally use say for instance on carbon steel and so I believe Roy is actually using a 045 that's a 1.1 millimeter diameter stainless steel filler rod here and, and part of the reason for that is you don't use as much amperage for stainless and so you get a puddle going quicker with a small rod and the rod doesn't chill the puddle as much either Roy just tends to use smaller filler rods than most people I have known I'd say across the board okay for this joint Roy is going to be using some serious chill blocks a, blo a block on the very inside all the way into the corner and then two more blocks on the outsides just allowing just enough room to get the weld and that's really going to pull the heat out and another thing that this does it looks like it looks like actually even one more clamp would would, would help here on the very end if you could fit it in there to really uh, provide contact with the with the chill bars now what this does along with pulling a lot of heat out of that stainless it also really aids in confining the argon provides like a argon trough so instead of the argon flowing over that outside corner and just kind of going where it wants to go it's somewhat contained here in this little 90 degree angle trough and you can already see you know the the, the nice straw looking color hardly even any blue in this in this weld and that's due to a combination of the number 12 furic cup as well as all the the heat sink factor drawing the heat out before the argon has a chance to pass over it and and this is this is this is the way you would want to do it if this was like say 16 gauge 1 16th 1.6 millimeter thickness or thinner you'd want to have these chill blocks in place and that is almost discoloration free let's talk for just a minute about what causes discoloration are right, affected by heat input travel speed the size of the argon envelope and the purity of the argon and chill factor either from chill bars or just from the thickness of the metal and the, the number 12 furic cup definitely provides a large argon shielded area even at 20 CFH which is really not any more than a number 8 uh, gas lens takes and you could say that the more chill factor that you have the smaller the cup you can get by with using and still get a good shiny weld but you don't always know so it's good to have a pretty large cup as well as chill bars like this for stainless steel now the next thing to do here is putting a little bracket on the inside just for a little uh, sort of a little false bottom for this thing to rest and Roy is using a one two three block along with a little piece of uh, scrap aluminum to space these things evenly on both sides now here's a look at, at the one of the drawers in Roy's toolbox you can see he's got all kinds of one two three blocks two four six blocks and we'll go over those in a, in a future video but they're very handy for spacing things that are even even dimensions now the only function of these little, little pieces of bar stock here is just to hold up a little lightweight shelf so they're not going to take much weld just a few tacks here and there and just a little bit of weld it would be it would be pointless to weld them all the way out it would just be asking for trouble and just completely unnecessary so we'll pop a few tack welds here and then I'll give you a little close-up of just a, about an inch of weld on the inside very a very small weld and this is obviously sped up but even so Roy moves at a pretty good pace anyway all right well that about wraps it up for part one you'll definitely want to keep an eye out for part two because I guarantee it's got some surprises in there that you're not expecting this is going to be a very useful tool for anybody to have in their shop and I'm also going to show a way to make it really really cheaply alright so you can you can learn more about that Furic number 12 cup which is one of the best cups I've ever used I sell them at weldmonger.com no pressure <laughs> if you want one that's that's one place you can get one though alright see you next time